today that Alec Baldwin will be charged with two counts of involuntary manslaughter in the 2021 fatal film set shooting that killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins and injured the director Joel Souza. Now, the film's armorer will be charged uh, also, while the first assistant director will plead no contest for negligent use of a deadly weapon. Now, because Baldwin's second charge includes a firearm enhancement, he could face a five-year mandatory sentence if he's found guilty. Now, Baldwin's legal team responded in a statement. In part, quote, Mr. Baldwin had no reason to believe there was a live bullet in the gun or anywhere on the movie set. He relied on the professionals with whom he worked, whom assured him that the gun did not have live rounds. Uh, we will fight these charges and we will win. And while uh, Baldwin claimed he never pulled the trigger of the gun, that claim was reportedly refuted by the FBI. Now, look, I'm going to be very honest about this. I don't like Alec Baldwin. I don't know anybody that does. He's an awful person. Everybody knows it. I've had my own personal fights with this idiot on Twitter, on radio. We've shown you video of his violent, vicious ten temper tantrums, especially with the media. We've played his hateful uh, te uh, his hateful voice messages to a young daughter at the time, but I really wouldn't wish any of this on anybody. Nothing we discuss here tonight is regarding this case is going to bring back Miss Hutchins, and I'm sure her family is still suffering at their loss. Our prayers are for them. Now here with Reaction, Armorer Brian Carpenter, he worked with New Mexico authorities on the case, along with attorney Mark Iglarsh is with us. Uh, you know, I want to I want to start with you, if I can, Brian, you know, it makes no sense. Why, number one, were there even live rounds on the set? And it never made sense to me, and, and I've had a, a carry permit in Rhode Island, California, Alabama, Georgia, and New York my whole adult life. I was a, a marksman at the age of 11, a p pistol marksman. Why would he, Alec Baldwin claim he never fired that weapon? Weapons don't fire themselves. Well, though, you brought up two very good points, and that's, you know, the DA's office out there has done an excellent job, you know, covering this and investigating this. And there is no reason under any circumstance that a live round should ever be in the atmosphere of a movie set uh, for any reason whatsoever. And there's protocols in place to make sure that it doesn't happen. And well, well, as far as him saying that he didn't fire the weapon, well, we all know that, you know, in order to discharge a weapon, one in good working condition, you know, there are different mechanisms in place, and one of which is the mechanism of the trigger that has to be pressed. I know our friend Judge Deneen interviewed the prosecutors, but you've worked with them. Uh, how strong would you assess the case that they have? How strong is this case? I don't think they have a strong case at all. This case belongs in civil court, where as the producer, if they feel like he was negligent, he should pay money damages. But it's completely different to say you've got proof beyond it to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt, the highest burden under the law in criminal court to say this goes from a tragic accident to a criminal offense. He is an actor. His job is to regurgitate the lines that other people write for him. There are other people but that he, are but hired he also to had, ensure that there's no Mark, live on rounds on the set. Mark, he yes. also had ex an executive role. He, even somebody like George Clooney yeah. said... Every time he is working with a firearm on a set, he believes, he believes it yes. is his responsibility to double check and make sure. Uh, and then this claim, do you believe the claim that, that Alec Baldwin didn't fire the weapon? Do you believe it fired itself? Have you ever heard of a firearm that's capable of firing itself? That's news to me. Okay. So I'll answer your questions. Number one, he screwed up. I always tell my clients, you know, keep your mouth shut. The fish who, who, who kept his mouth shut never got caught. So he made a mistake. He tried to win this in the court of public opinion, and now it's going to hurt him in a criminal court. He should have said, yes, I pulled the trigger, but I had no idea but Mark, there wait was a, second. a live there, round a lot of, in that Mark, gun. a lot of time yes. elapsed before he did that interview with Stephanopoulos. Uh, are you going to tell me you don't believe he consulted with his lawyers uh, repeatedly before that interview? You don't think that was a planned interview, you know a I planned believe? defense? I've had clients like this. No, I believe no? that his lawyers probably told him it's a horrible idea. Absolutely not. A guy like this thinks on his own. And either he didn't consult with a lawyer because no lawyer worth his salt would have told him to do it. But Keep the bottom line, the jury, Mark, is going to see this interview. He screws. The, he screwed up. 
The jury right. is going to hear him make the claim, he, the, I never fired the weapon. The jury's not going to believe that, Mark. I, I don't disagree with you. I think that if he takes the stand, and only then does this come into evidence. If he doesn't take the stand, I don't think they can use it. Now he's forced not to take the stand. That's a problem. Again, I don't think that you do justice for the victims by doing an injustice against Alec Baldwin. I think this is an injustice. Keep Before it in I get civil back to court Brian, where he has to pay you money think, damages. What makes you think that a judge will declare this, this interview with George Stephanopoulos, his comments after the fact, off limits uh, to the jury? I'm not so sure the judge won't allow that. Well, personally, I, I don't think there's a lot in. of It'll factors a at play here, and longer. one of the main factors right, at Brian. play here is the beauty of him as a producer and the duty of him as an actor. It's like getting behind the wheel of a vehicle. You get behind the wheel, you take on a responsibility for safety for those around you, and you know what you can and cannot do. He, by his own admission, multiple times said he was an experienced actor handling firearms. As an actor handling firearms and someone who knows exactly what to and to not do on a set, he understood the protocol, realized that the protocol was not in place, and continued on anyway. And that's Again, beside a separate and apart from his role as a producer to make sure that the proper personnel were in place, that they were hired properly, that they were had the proper training, proper certifications to be on a set handling the safety of others. Now, there apparently, but it uh, Brian, rise to the level hang on, of hang, Mark, hang on a second. It's not Brian, reckless criminally. Hang on, Brian. There were other incidents apparently that took place prior to this incident. Uh, how strong do you believe the prosecution's case is? You worked with them. Right. Uh, they have, a, in my opinion, a very strong case. And as I said, did an excellent job. They were they were very unbiased. They started from where you should start the very beginning and work their way through every interview, every person that was on set that they could talk to and simply looked at it from a factual standpoint. And in doing so, came to the conclusion that there was negligence and not just yeah. one thing. As I said, there were many things. And right, I think Mark, that when this plays a... out... Uh, that will become evident to all those that are watching. Mark, let's assume I'm right and the judge does allow the interview with Stephanopoulos to, to be played and that statement of, of Alec Baldwin that he never fired the gun. If the jury hears that, how damaging could that be? What impact would that have on the jury? I think it would be pretty profound. I agree with you. It's colossal. Uh, then all of a sudden it comes down to some FBI folks to say this is how much pressure it takes to pull the trigger. And for sure, he pulled that trigger. He screwed up. He should never have said that. That said, there's a difference between civil responsibility, money damages and criminal. This falls short of a criminal case. All right. Thank you both. We appreciate it, Mark. Thank you. And we, uh, we thank you both for being on board. All right, coming up, we're going to explain how the Pentagon is, they're now still punishing our brave service members that refuse to get the COVID vaccine. Why? These brave men and women deserve better treatment from their country. That is next, and you get the last word tonight. Last call coming up.